Hey there guys, Daniel here, welcome back to the Motor Dance Garage and today we're going to be doing valve clearances on my 2017 DR650. Now this is a really simple job to do, it doesn't take long at all. Um, so I'll quickly run you through the process. Right, first off you want to remove the side panel seat and the gas tank. Um, that really needs no explanation. So we'll jump straight into the actual valve clearance job. So first thing you want to do is remove the two valve inspection caps. So there's one for the intake and one for the exhaust. Now before you do this, you want to just make sure the general area is fairly clean. There's not any big piles of mud that are going to fall in there while you do this. Um, mine is not too bad. It's two 10 mils for each plate. and then they just lift off. These are changeable, so it doesn't really matter which one goes where. Um, they're sealed with a big rubber o-ring, uh, which is reusable. You may want to think about changing that maybe every three or four valve clearance checks just to be safe. Um, mine were replaced when I did the, the circle up in the gearbox when I had the whole engine apart. So these ones are good for a few a few more checks yet. Right, now with the, the caps removed, we want to come down to the engine and remove the two inspection plugs that we need to take out. So this one at the top here is to visually see when the engine's at top dead center. And this one here is to access the big stator bolt, which means you can then turn the engine over using that bolt. Um, so these are warp nine plugs. So it's a 10 mil here and an eight mil there. I'm not sure if they are stock ones that are that, I think they could be. Um, now you may have an issue with the original ones getting this one out. Um, I certainly did, that's why the Warp 9 ones fitted. And mine were seized in solid. Now I'll flash up the best way I found to do that was just with a big chisel. Hook it in there and bash it round. And I bought these Warp 9 ones and I haven't had an issue since. So with that off, we can get into here with a 17 millimeter and we can turn the engine over. Uh, now you want to turn it over in the normal direction of travel, which is anti-clockwise for the DR. Uh, now you can remove the spark plugs just to make the engine just that little bit easier to turn over. Um, I generally don't have an issue with it, um, but if you are having some kind of trouble, um, certainly remove them. Um, I won't be for at the moment. And now you want to look in this hole here and what you're looking for is a T mark with a little line on it. Oh, there we go. There you, there you can see it. Now with that T mark lined up, you just want to have a feel of the, the rockers here. And you want, you want to be able to feel a little bit of movement there. So all I'm doing is just shaking this bit here. This part of the rocker here, checking for movement. There's absolutely no movement there, which means we are 180 degrees out. So we need to turn the engine back over again and line up the T-mark. So that's the T-mark lined back up again. Now if we give these a wee shake, you can hear there is a bit of movement there. And you can feel it too. So what you want to do, you want to be on top dead centre on compression stroke, which means there's absolutely no pressure on the valves. Both valves are completely shut. When we first checked up, we were on top dead centre on the exhaust stroke. Um, so at top dead centre on the exhaust stroke, the exhaust valves are just finishing up closing and the intake valves are just starting to open. So there is a bit of pressure there, which means you can't check them. Right, so now we're in the correct position, we can go ahead and check them. Now I've got these little um, bent feeler guides here for checking them. Um, I think these are Motion Pro ones. I bought them from, I think, Adventure Bike Australia. Uh, one of them has snapped already, so I wouldn't probably recommend these, but they are, they do get in there and they do do the job. Now the specifications for this is on the intake side, 0 0.08 millimeters to 0 0.13 millimeters. And on the exhaust side is 0 0.17 millimeters to 0 0.22 millimeters. 
Now the exhaust side's always got a bigger clearance because it does get a lot hotter than the intake side and when metal gets hot it expands. That's why you need to have a valve clearance there. So go ahead and check the intake side to start with. And these little feeler gauges I've got go from 0. Point, it's got a, a 0 0.10 and a 0 0.13 for the intake. So the intake one is uh, it's actually the 0 0.101 one which broke off, which was the one you really want, which is in the middle. Um, so we'll be using the 0 0.131, one, which doesn't really matter, but um, as long as you're in that range, you'll be sweet. Now it's quite hard to show you where you need to go, but basically you need to go in between the top of the valve and the bottom of this uh, wee adjuster here. So you want to fit that in there and what you want to feel is a light drag on the feeler gauge. Which I do feel there. Um, now, a light drag is not really a very scientific way of doing it because everybody's light drag is slightly different. Now, if you did have a a 0.14, for example, you could try and get that in there. And if it didn't fit, then you know the clearance is 0.13. I don't have a 0.13, so I'm just going off uh, the feel of it here. Um, but really, you just want to feel a light drag. And this one here is also the same. So we'll now hop over and check the exhaust side. Now this exhaust one I've got goes from 0.15 to 0 0.20. So it's the 0 0.201 that I want to stick in there, which is in the middle of the specified range. And same thing again, you want to just feel a light drag on the feeler gauge. And they are both pretty good. So this time my valves did not need adjusting. In my experience, they generally don't really need to be adjusted, to be honest. Um, the book specifies that you check them at the first 1,000 Ks and then every 12,000 after that. I generally check them every 10,000 Ks, but to be honest, they never really need that much adjustment. Um, but like I said, it's not a massive job, as you can see, to check them. It's always worth doing. Now I have this tool here from Motion Pro, which I use for adjusting them if I ever need to. Um, it's got a 10mm end on one side, and then it's got this little piece with a square end on it that fits up the middle. So I'll put that on here and I'll show you how it works. So you can see on the top of the valve here, uh, this has got a square drive on it. And what you're doing is just you're screwing this up and down in here, which is reducing and increasing the clearance between the top of the rocker here and the actual valve. Um, so you'd stick on the 10mm you would slacken off the actual nut there, insert this down the middle, and you'd either screw this down or slacken this off to um, get your required clearance. Now what I would generally do would have the feeler blade in there and just screw it up so, the feeler, so it's just sort of finger tight on the feeler blade. At that you should be able to remove, um, you should have a light drag on the feeler blade. While holding the top bit then you can just turn this around and nip this up. This tool here is very good. And I would highly recommend uh, picking this up for doing this job. It makes it a lot easier than trying to use a spanner. I don't think it was very expensive either, to be honest. Right, with that done, I'm just going to put the caps back on. And she's good to go. Now, you don't want to go mega tight on these ones because they are into alloy. Um, I just use that Motion Pro adjuster tool there. And because it's so short, you can't really over tighten them. And then we just stick our caps back in. Now you can put a bit of anti-seize on here if you want, just some copper grease or something similar. With these warp 9 plugs, I don't really feel it's necessary. You just don't want to over tighten them. So again, I'm just using my wee short ratchet and just a a wee nip up with them. Right guys, that's about it for this video. Like I said, super simple job to do. Valve clearance check on the DR650. Um, nothing really over complicated at all there. I'll link below those tools that I've got which do make the job quite a bit easier, especially if you've got to adjust it. Um, so I just need to chuck the tank and the seat on and then we're good to go. Drop a comment below, let me know how often you check your valve clearances on your DR650. And if, it, if you find it really needs to be adjusted that often, like I said, I do mind about every 10,000 Ks and it generally doesn't need to be adjusted. 
So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you all next time. See you later.